Please go ahead, sir. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Quote James, first chapter, fifth verse. Good morning to everyone present here. Before we begin the second day, let's place ourselves. In the presence of the Lord, dear God, we offer everything to you during this webinar. Keep us physically safe and guard our hearts and minds from pride and selfishness. Amen. Thank you. As we move on to the second and final day, it's a privilege for me to introduce the speaker of the first session, Dr. Rajadurai Vijay Salaman. Dr. Solomon did his PhD from Bharat Dasan University, postdoctoral at the University of South Carolina, USA. He was also a Swiss Excellence Fellow, University of Basel, Switzerland. With, with best research awards, presentation awards, and projects from DST, United Board for Christian Higher Education, Dr. Solomon has published 44 publications with 532 citations. He is also a reviewer for Elsevier, Springer, and RSC journals. And I recommend that you visit his personal website displayed on the screen. Today he will be talking about journal selection and predatory journals. We are happy to welcome you, dear Solomon. Over to Dr. Solomon. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful introduction. And uh, without much delay, we will begin our process of the day. Good morning to all, and I'm very happy to be here to deliver the talk in this webinar. And uh, I thank uh, Loyola College Management, Principal Father, and the Deanery, and the uh, uh, faculty members of Loyola College for having me here uh, in this webinar. And I would like to also thank the Co Madras Christian College Principal and the management and the faculty members for supporting me uh, in each and every aspect. OK, before uh, going into the uh, details of today's talk, we have received so many questions. And, and I have categorized them into few uh, questions. And these are the common questions that I can encounter when I look into the feedbacks. And what are UGC CAD journals? Why some journals are suddenly disappearing from UGC CAD list? And uh, uh, some people have asked, I published a paper in UGC CAD journal, and now it is not in the list. What does it mean? Is my research become waste? Uh, some people have asked, or many people have asked, what are Scopus Index and the Buff Science Index journals? So many impact factors and journal metrics, which one is reliable in selecting a journal? Paid journal or subscription journal? Which is better? Printed journal or online journal? Which is best? How much one should pay to publish a Scopus journal? Is there any website available to check fake journals? points to be keep in mind before selecting a journal. All these 10 questions are the commonly prevailing questions in the minds of people. So uh, during the course of time, I'll try to uh, address 
almost all the issues here and a disclaimer i would like to give here is within a short span of time it is very tough to complete all the nuances uh, uh, in uh, in the publication process but i'll try my level best to address each and every question possible okay let me start with a ugc cap uh, what is ugc cap okay so in order to maintain a quality university grants commission it's a, a highest uh, apex body for higher education in india they came up with a list of journals okay that is called ugc cap journal here you need to look into the two groups available one is ugc care list group 1 and another one is ugc care list group 2 and what is group 1 what is group 2 if you look at group 2 group 2 is as uh, these journals are part of ugc care list as group 2 and searchable through the following link what are they arts and humanities citation index science citation index expanded social science citation index all these things are part of web of science and if you scroll down you can find scopus so the journals present in web of science and scopus are uh, automatically be in the list of group 2 category but what is group 1 group 1 is some of the journals which are not part of the web of science or scopus but a committee framed by the ugc suggested that those journals should be there in the meritorious list so those journals are listed in group 1 so we will see some more information on that okay this is a thing that they have given here ugc cap is a dynamic if any good quality journal is missing it may be submitted by following the prescribed process if any undeserved journal is found anywhere in the list it may kindly be reported to feedback option so this is very clear you can see that if you are running a journal or if your institution is running a journal or if your society is running a journal which is a standard journal which is following all the um, uh, review process and the code of contact in the research publication then you can prescribe or you can suggest that journal the committee will look into the journal and look into the merit of the journal and if they feel the journal should be here in this list they will definitely include that on the other hand if some of the journals is listed here if you feel that is a substandard journal we can all raise a question or we can give our feedback as a citizen of india we have all rights to do that so this is the problem with ugc care group 1 journal because some of you have asked that question i published a paper but suddenly disappears from the list because someone can uh, you know uh, might have raised the question and the, the committee looked into that and they felt that that journal is not on par with the standard publication so they have removed that journal so this is the mechanism by which the journals are included or excluded from the list next here it's a group 1 journal you can find science 329 journals social science 365 journals arts and humanities uh, 311 multidisciplinary 36 and languages 200 so this is a dynamic list so sometime you may you may see that some of the journals are added and some of the journals are deleted from the list and you can search because some people have how i i can find whether my journal is in the list here is a uh, uh, mechanism title issn and publisher subject language of publication you can type and you can search you can get those journals available or not here uh, i have clicked social sciences where 302 journals are there and if you look at that i have uh, highlighted that a uh, journal administrative theory and uh, practice it is indexed in scopus which means that journal is originally listed in group 1 and uh, scopus recently accepted that uh, into uh, their database so it is indexed in scopus similarly you can see the other african journal of business and economic research is indexed in scopus so uh, scopus is also another database which has a certain criteria which must be met so that the journal can be included in the list here you have i have listed one issn and eissn so issn is given for the printed one eissn is for the electronic version the online journal so you can find some of the journals here listed here uh, they have both issn for printed and the online version which means those journals might have started in the year you know uh, before 2000 or before the internet era 
and uh, now they have come uh, initially they were uh, published their articles in a printed version now they have uh, uh, reached a place where electronic versions are also available so they are also having the e version e i session so if you want to disseminate your knowledge because the very purpose of research is uh, to help the society with your findings so in that case if you think about your your uh, paper should reach uh, a number of audience then electronic versions is always good uh, when compared to printed version because printed versions will reach with the limited people but uh, you can reach wide audience through electronic versions but this is again a suggestion okay uh, uh, some people have mentioned that suddenly it's disappeared. See, discontinued from April 2020, which means someone might have raised a question about the quality of the journal and the committee looked into that journal and they found, yes, that is right. So uh, they they actually uh, discontinued that uh, from April 2020. Okay, uh, so this is about the UGC care list and you can, you can go through the website and the age and everything is there in the list. Uh, just wait one minute. Fine. Now, uh, I'll move on to the other one. Many people have asked about the journal metrics, which is not uh, in the scope of this talk, but I'll touch few aspects of journal metrics. You can find journal metrics here in every uh, front page of your journal you see there are many scores are given site score impact factor five year impact factor source normalis impact factor uh, simago uh, journal rank and so on but which one is reliable that is a big question and how they are actually uh, being calculated let's see okay what is site score okay site score and impact factor both are uh, good measures of the quality of a journal because it depends on the number of citations received for the articles published in those journals this is how the site score is calculated citations received in 2015 for the documents published in 2012 13 and 14 okay b is sum of documents published in the title 2012 13 and 14 all document types are included except article in trust so the site score is calculated by a divided by b in a very simple term, let me explain. If suppose uh, we want to calculate the site score for 2020, then the number of articles published in 2017, 18, and 19 will be taken into consideration. So three years, let's say a journal is publishing 50, 50, 50 articles. So total article is 150 articles in three years. Okay. In 2020, those 150 articles, uh, uh, how many citations they got? in 2020 so number of citations for the papers published in 17 18 19 in 2020 let's say it it uh, uh, it got around 150 citations okay divided by the three year total publication number so 150 divided by 150 is is equal to one so site score is one this is how this has been calculated okay so in this uh, information you can find in scopus uh, and you can click source and you can find that the journal metrics and yesterday dr jacob has given a detailed picture about how one should use scopus okay here site score as i said that the site score for this particular journal is 2.70 which means citation count in 2018 there are 4796 citations for the documents published in 2015 to 17 so three years uh, are taken into consideration and number of citation in the fourth year so if you the citation divided by number of documents it is 2.7 okay and the site score is given by the scopus scopus is a product of lcvr uh, it is calculated uh, in every month okay every month they are calculating uh, the uh, site score so this one i have got uh, in april uh, 30 and then they have given another dynamic version is called site score tracker 2019 which means you can see that the citation count 2019 divided by documents from 2016 to 2018 always when the year is completed then only we can come to know about the site score 
or impact factor. So here, Sitecore Tracker will give uh, latest update, uh, you know, monthly updated uh, results. So it is more or like equal to the impact factor. Why I am saying equal to? You you can uh, understand in the next slide. Okay. On the other hand, people are having so many confusions about impact factor. So the definition goes like this: the impact factor measures the average number of citations received in a particular year by papers published in the journal during the two preceding years. So it is very similar to site score. Yes, it is very similar to site score. So site score is calculated for three years and impact factor is calculated for two years. Another uh, difference is impact factor counts only articles and reviews, which means only two items it will count. And the site score counts editorial because editorial page or editorial article will not get much citation, but that will count and it will count book reviews what are the content that are given in the uh, paper or the journal which will be counted there so this is the striking difference between the impact factor and the site score again the definition goes like this the number of times article published in a specific journal in 2014 and 15 were cited by the journals during 2016. so total number of citable items published citable items means articles reviews and proceedings not editorials not our letter to the editors or book reviews uh, will be counted here okay uh, so another major difference is you can find here the this is given by journal citation reports given by again uh, clarivate analyst analytics so clarivate analytics uh, uh, clarivate uh, analytics uh, is having journal citation report and the, those journals are part of journal citation report and the web of science are eligible to get an impact factor so if you go through the web page of any of the journals if you find the impact factor please type the journal name in the web of science and find whether the journal has a place in the web of science if not that is not the impact factor i, I hope i i make it very clear here Okay. Now, coming to the main picture of uh, today's session is um, uh, the predatory journals and journal selection. Okay, this is how I have organized my talk. Type of publications, what is open access, what is article processing chart, what is predatory journals, how to identify predatory journals and some guidelines. Okay. Why do you want to do research? By submitting a manuscript, you are basically trying to sell your work to your community. Here, you look at that, uh, there are two astronauts, they are talking. Hey Tom, I wanted to apologize about yesterday when I called you a worthless astronaut. And the other person says, you never called me that. Oh really? I uh, never mind then. Okay, so which means that your paper is worthless. If no one reads, no one uses, or no one cites it, and nobody cares about your work, then it is, to, uh, it is placed in a junkyard. Again, I tell you, if your paper is worthless, if no one reads, uses, or cites, or cares for it, okay? So, if you publish something, people should read it because you are disseminating the knowledge that you gain from your hard work. You, you have invested in research because writing a manuscript, designing a work is not an easy task and you have devoted your valuable time, Okay, you are you PhD scholars. If you look at that, they toil their youth in the laboratories to come up with the products, data, and they want to disseminate the knowledge to the society because we are using everything from the taxpayers' money. Some of the statistics we would like to see before getting into the open access. India stands ninth in the scientific publication, which means we are very good. We are in top ten uh, in the in the number of scientific publications. But unfortunately, 60% of predatory publishing groups are from India. What do you mean by predatory publishing group? The journals are from India. The journals owned by the Indian people. The journals owned by Indian society. The journals, the journals owned by the Indian editors. India is a hub of predatory publication. What do you mean? We publish a lot of our work in predatory journals. Predatory journals, which means fake journals, dubious journals. Or uh, I would say that bogus journal, or uh, you can say opportunistic journal, and so on. Indian colleges especially contribute to 51 percentage of the predatory journals. 
over 8000 predatory journals are listed in a famous list we are going to see that but i tell you in the world we have 60000 predatory journals and india contributes to 45000 predatory publications faculty members are easily deceived by fake details given in their website so only awareness can bring a change here okay let me start with the type of publications or journals one is subscription journals open access journals subscription based journals typically require readers to pay for the content that they read which means when you have uh, internet when you search that they will show only the abstract and if you want to the want to look at the content then they say that you need to pay something or your institution should have the subscri subscription for those journals on the other hand open access journals you can read the entire content at no cost free of charge it is available in the internet so that is a two different uh, different school of thoughts here subscription journals and open access journals and both need money right running a journal is not a joke so they need money so the money is generated out of the subscription in subscription based journals here open access journals demand money from the authors so that the readers can enjoy the benefit of uh, going through your research work when i look at the term called open access it is not a new term because it is listed in the bible the lord invited those who had no resources to come buy wine and milk without money and without price and let your soul delight itself in abundance incline your ear and come to me that is what the lord says the bible says like that so open access is not a new term it is free of cost if you do not have a money no problem we are ready to give our research work at no cost this is how the definition uh, listed in this particular uh, uh, reference by open access we mean it's free availability on the public internet permitting any users to read download copy distribute print search or link to the full text of these articles crawl them for indexing pass them as data to software or use them for any other lawful purpose without financial legal or technical barrier only thing you need is internet that is a very simple definition okay how many number of journals are there open access journals listed in a standard database called doaj we are going to see that what is doaj now currently we have around 15000 journals which are open access which means you need to pay for every article okay so around 15000 journals are available which are uh, purely uh, open access journals and when you look at the open access journal or some journals they have some terms terminologies one should be aware of all these things gold open access in gold open access the publishing costs are covered by fees charged to the authors upon acceptance of their manuscripts for publication the advantage of this public publishing model is that the published articles are free for anyone to access so here gold open access means the authors should bear the charges so that the work will be freely available to the public that is called gold open access the other one is called hybrid open access here authors publish in international subscription journals again i underline the word subscription journals since uh, uh, for example the journal might have started uh, you know uh, in the early 90s or 80s and they were a subscription journal now they say that okay we are subscription journal we don't want to get any money from the authors but if you feel your work should be given to the readers free of cost you can pay the money to us so that your article alone in the entire issue will be uh, freely available to the uh, audience so that is a hybrid open access so the journal is subscription based journal you don't want to pay any money if you want to make your content uh, freely available to the public then you need to bear the charges it is not mandatory if you wish you can pay and you can make your article open access okay i'm going to give one example here journal of banking and finance it's a premier journal and it says that supports open access which means the journal will not demand any money but your article uh, if you want your article to be uh, uh, disseminated in the we website at free of cost then you need to pay the money okay some of the journals called diamond or platinum open access the journals will not charge either the author or the reader then how they are bearing the charges how they are running the journal 
because the funding sources are obtained from the academic institutions or the societies or some industries or the government grant grants so such journals are freely available they will neither charge the author nor the readers so what is the uh, you know benefits of open access number one you will get lot of uh, you know citations because it is freely available and immediately it will be available to the public anyone can read as long as they have the internet and researchers in developing countries can see your work without paying any money and the taxpayers get value for the money because we are working uh, at the cost of the taxpayers money and the public can access your findings immediately your research plan suppose you you have published a work uh, that is a drug for covid 19 then immediately everyone can look into the work and the government can take that as a good medicine and they can uh, include it in their policy and higher citation uh, rates and anyone can use the idea so that is the advantage of open access and but as far as the developing country like india and people uh, from a uh, middle income countries we have a huge concern on the article processing charges because we need to pay. We are happy that we are our content is uh, you know disseminated to the entire audience at free of cost, but we need to bear the article processing charge. The first initiative taken uh, by the PLOS, Public Library of Science and the Biomed Central BMC, they have started introducing the open access concept and they term the, uh, the charges as article processing charges, APC. Uh, to uh, run the journal okay so this is a report in 2012 there are one lakh article published in 2010 uh, in open access and the average article processing charges was 904 dollars this means around 60,000 or 50,000 rupees you need to pay per article and the price range varied from 8 dollar to 3,900 us dollar which means 8 dollar around 500 rupees so 500 rupees if you pay you can get a open access and uh, it it can go to 3900 us dollar this is stats but some people have asked sir i want to publish an open access article in scopus so i have given the list i cannot list all the 2400 journals uh, you know owned by elsevier so if you look at that the minimum amount you want to pay to get a elsevier journal is 150 dollar that is material today proceeding and if you look at that, at least you need $250, $300 and the list goes on. And the highest amount that you need to pay is $5,900 per article, which means 4 lakh rupees you need to pay for one article. This is the article processing fee. Okay. And here you look at that, I have given that hybrid open access. So what is the nature of the journal? Hybrid, 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 which means they will not demand any money. But if you want your article to be available free of cost, you need to pay $5,000. So they are not asking any money. It is purely your wish to publish a open access in these journals. On the other hand, if you look at that open access, if it is open access, every article should be available at free of cost for the readers, but the authors should bear the charges. Is it clear? Okay. Now, I'm going to introduce this DOAJ, Directory of Open Access Journal. This is the widely accepted uh, database for open access journal. Around four, 14,000 odd journals are listed here and around 48 lakh articles are uh, available here. So you can use that this as a search engine and if the journal is open access, if you want to publish any journal, then you can type here whether the journal is listed in DOAJ. Okay, I simply type COVID-19 and I just want to see how many articles are available at free of cost. See 700 results, already 700 papers are available at free of cost. So if anyone wants to use this as a, a survey of literature or searching literature, I, do, I don't have any facility to uh, pay money, get the subscription and see the content, but you can very well use the DOAJ as a search engine. Why I, I insisted this DYAJ? Because if you publish an open access, you should ask the publisher whether your journal is listed in DYAJ because that is a standard database which includes all the open access journal. And this is an initiative uh, taken up by the premier society, scientific societies um, uh, available around the globe. Okay, 
so every premier publication uh, groups are giving uh, uh, awareness program on open access and i have listed here springer open access what is open access benefits of gold open access article processing charges copyright and license and then uh, open access versus subscri subscription journals and quiz so you read all the uh, uh, items here and i urge all the viewers to go and click the quiz and uh, have at up and let's check uh, your knowledge in the open access okay now coming to the main feature identify a predatory journal as i said that india is a hub of predatory journals both in terms of publishing papers in predatory journals and running predatory journals and we will see that how one can identify the predatory journals okay so librarian jeffrey biel uh, he is a librarian in university of colorado denver usa he coined the name predatory journal okay and uh, he has listed a number of journals in his list it is called biel's list you can simply type biel's list and you can click go to update he has listed around 2425 publishers so every journal is run by a publisher right so that publisher and he has listed all 2425 and he is keep on uh, adding uh, the number so if you find your uh, publisher here in this list then uh, i suggest you don't want to publish a paper in those journals because there are certain criteria we are going to see that and uh, and based on the criteria he has screened a number of journals of course he has screened only 8000 journals in the list now from 2425 public publishers but india is having 45000 predatory journals so we should be very aware of the journals the selection of journals okay common features of predatory journals use of attractive words in the journal titles such as international global world universal asian american and european what is the problem with this okay they will they will call themselves as uh, american journal of something you know anything american journal of microbiology running from uh, a city like uh, you know delhi they call themselves as american journal of microbiology but if you look at the contact address the journal is uh, you know owned by a indian so such type of fancy words may distract you multidisciplinary scope and broad coverage of subject the journal name itself journal of research in engineering and science and humanities and arts when I mean, what else needed every common branches will be uh, will be collectively included in the title possible uh, way so that whatever paper you submit they will accept it so if that is the case we should be very careful about that location in developing countries and climbing an address that is in us or uk as i mentioned abuse of the committee on publication ethics very very careful about this the publication ethics because most of the times they will say themselves as a peer reviewed journal but no peer review uh, will be done so if that is a the case they are violating the committee on uh, the uh, the publication ethics promising a short or ultra short review timing you pay the money or you submit the journal within 24 hours within 3 days within 5 days your paper will be accepted guaranteed if you find that uh, that is the one of the uh, one of the important aspects in predatory journal you should be very very careful about it claiming indexation in legitimate databases but they do not know they say that it is like you know ugc listed or scopus listed web of science listed or so many databases they will give but uh, no nobody is going to check that so if you find that anywhere go and check those databases whether the journal is there or not if the journal is not there in the database but claiming that they are the part of the database then that is a predatory journal using fake impact factors i just uh, crawl through the internet and if i found around 13 or 14 impact factors but again i tell you if a journal is not indexed in web of science it is journal is not given in the clarivate analysis is then that is not eligible to get a impact factor using general email address like yahoo.com or gmail.com editor@gmail.com then those email addresses uh, are uh, a one, a one of the key key aspects in identifying the predatory journal lack of any contact details if you click contact details they will say the form give your name and address and message and submit 
so if that is the case then uh, it can be a potential uh, threat call for papers through email standard journals will not ask any papers or call for papers through email okay you might have received n number of mails saying that the uh, impact factor of this and that no standard journals will not call for papers through email they will display that in their website and there is a scope and special issue or anything that they will mention it clear there with okay, this are some of the aspect we are going to see some of the examples in each category okay here i have given one such website you see that if you have any questions comments or suggestion about our website please contact but you said no location uh, is given for their uh, uh, you know journal but they said contact something like this contact form then you don't want to proceed with this journal like i have uh, uh, i have masked few uh, of the aspects in the web page to avoid uh, the problems or conflicts so if you say that 43 journals are uh, given uh, by a publisher covering from arts to science no you should publish your journal in, in only the journal is run by a professional body or a professional society or a premier uh, association uh, in india or in abroad look at that this journal you look at that fast track publication within 48 hours and within bracket they said guaranteed after receiving of publication fee and copyright form which means clearly they are running this as a business notification for acceptance within 48 hours of paper submission soft copy of certificates immediately within 4 hours after receiving if you publish any paper i tell you don't require any of the certificate from anyone who are they to give certificate to you you are you publish a paper and that is freely available online that is the highest evidence why do you need certificates don't go by these small uh, you know things uh, you will be easily distracted or deceived look at the call us and you find whatsapp no there's email it's like gmail okay so if that is the case you should avoid such journal then they said there are so many numbers scientific journal impact factor their journal impact factor and DOA number and some indexes 1.4 10.2 45. something some and so you see that okay this is a very good so we can go for no all you check the journal uh, name and uh, uh, ensure the credentials are right or wrong look at that we are covering almost all the engineering uh, divisions in anna university aeronautical to textile no 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 you don't go to the broad area journals you go you should be very specific in selecting a journal that should be a premier journal in your field here the other one they said please submit your manuscript to email editor at gmail.com we should be very careful to this and then this journal says there are a lot of impact factors again if you type the journal name uh, you will not find the journal name in web of science so these factors i'm not saying these are the fake impact factors actually uh, there are 13 uh, agencies which are giving impact factor but what is the authenticative uh, impact factor is given by web of science here i have given a one journal this is called ugc approved journal and impact factor is 3.7985 but if you check in the web of science no such journal is there very careful about this i said article tracking call number for others whatsapp you cannot track article over phone which means that they are clearly working for money so they say that international journal on something if you look at that uh, editor editorial editor in chief in chennai bangalore chennai pune and punjab haryana you know you can list all the states in india you can find but they claim themselves as an international journal you should be very careful you should look at the editorial board see whether the journal is a truly an international journal or not then they give uh, different impact factors i said you click uh, the web of science and see they said google based if see, all these metrics are fine but they are not reliable metrics to measure the quality of journal say, i got this mail approved journal the subject itself approved journal you see that impact factor 7.97 and uh, if you look at that fast publication low cost fast response one day publication where is the peer review and the interesting part is low cost free e certificate when it's a e certificate it is free only and then what is low cost so such type of 
you know words you need to be very clear i clicked this journal and then i said that international peer reviewed and the refereed journals open access journal what do they want to convey if you find that you know uh, awkward english in the website then you should be very careful about that whether do you want to publish that journal there or not they call for papers in april 2020 and that uh, that is not updated because i have taken this in may which means the standard journals will keep their website up to date and if that is a you know lack in all these things then that is not a, a indication uh, uh, of being a good journal an impact factor is 7.97 i checked in the calculator by google scholar google scholar will never give any impact factor so don't deceive by these things i got a mail uh, you know uh, two days back and they said dear rajdurai vijay solomon uh, publishes original article submission are open kindly submit your paper for our journal on or before 20th june very sorry if you receive this mail kindly put it into spam or you uh, delete it and because i checked that website okay I, I let me check that website just to see that what kind of publication is the contact address again a form is appeared so again this is an indication that this journal is not a great journal it is a substandard in nature okay i'll just uh, give a brief uh, outline about the impact factor it is a fact that thomson reuters now clarivate analytics jcr journal citation report impact factor is the most reliable and authentic one and is the only measure that is considered for the purpose of academic evaluation other metrics such as the scientific journal impact factor universal impact factor global impact factor etc are the products of other indexing companies and they are not acceptable as impact factor because any of the indexes that you can come up with uh, and you can give to journals by getting money okay so i do not have a time to list all the 13 fake impact factors so uh, i just give this uh, concise idea to you now i am going to give another interesting one uh, we might have played with uh, uh, cartoons where you need to find six differences one such case is here you look at that there is a tree in the elsevier journal and then here also and uh, they have given the name here. I masked most of the stuff. The journal uh, picture is there on the other hand side. Look at the font, look at the outlook appearance. It is very tough to find, oh, the, which one is the uh, fake and which one is the uh, authentic one. Uh, but uh, don't deceive by the attractive PDFs. Okay, oh, very colorful and very attractive. So I publish, no, no, no. You should go and verify the um, uh, the importance of that particular journal and the uh, uh, reliability of the journal, how the publication ethics, ethics and so on. So you need to be very careful. Don't deceive by the colorful PDFs available. Okay. So I said that yesterday we have seen you can uh, create your own uh, username and password in this clarivate.com and you can search the journal name here and you can click search. Uh, if the journal is not appeared here in this it is not eligible to get the impact factor and i suggest or i appeal and i plead to you all to go for the web of science index papers i am not a brand ambassador of web of science paper because it is again an indexing body uh, but i said i tell you that web of science has uh, maintained a good quality in measuring the journal and indexing the journal so if your journal is there in web of science don't worry about ugc care journals because it is automatically part of UGC CARE group two journals. Okay, some of the other one, there is a, a journal called third text that is in the of science and the other journal called third concept. Religion, state and society is a web of science index journal and religion and society is not indexed in. So you may be deceived by the, the very similar names. Okay, slight changes in the name and you think that okay that journal is third uh, concept okay we'll go ahead but that is not indexed in web of science problem you publish paper uh, your published paper may go unavailable at any time if you look at that okay i published a paper in that journal and suddenly the journal is closed and now my my research work is disappeared so that is a problem with the op the predatory journals the quality of your research work is questioned because you 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 might be very good in your research work and the research work data everything is very good and uh, you didn't give any fake details details but 
the next paper in the same issue if that contains uh, fake details and other things your work is also viewed as a fake publication your reputation may go down when your colleagues notice your name in these dubious journals reputation of the institute at, will be at bay it will spoil your mphil or phd students career because when they apply for assistant professorship the moment they find uh, their name in the fake journals very sorry the premier institutions will uh, look them uh, in in a very poor light and uh, their integrity will be questioned you should check these seven things uh, i didn't give because the springer gives these things you recognize the journal have you come across the title in your reading of the subject or do your colleagues know the title a title means here they are telling the journal and have submitted there so before submitting a, a paper to a journal whether the journal is a good journal in your field whether your colleagues are aware of that and you check all the important aspects with your seniors or with your well wishers whether the journal is okay or not if you are a beginner you can easily see who published the journal and can contact them via email or telephone do they clearly state where their offices are based i, I have i have given an example the contact list if that is the case don't go for that the journal is indexed in databases that you regularly use to find papers so always go for scopus and web of science index papers even for your references that is actually good the journal is a member of a standard and affiliation whether the premier societies in your field is running the journal or any uh, tom and dick is running a journal please aware of that you recognize members of the editorial board are recently published authors please check whether they claim that as an international look at the uh, editorial board and look at the um, uh, uh, recently published articles uh, which country authors are publishing the paper they claim that as an international but only uh, a particular state uh, people are publishing please uh, check that they make a peer review policy of the journal clear in the website what is their peer review policy whether it's a double blind peer review and so on you need to be very uh, clear in checking those details before submitting a paper any charges or costs are clearly displayed on the journal site if it is a charge uh, it is a open access you need to pay and there are standard journals which are open access and you need to pay a lot and you can publish it depends on you how you want to go ahead but it should be clearly mentioned in the journal website okay when you publish your uh, research work in any of the open access journals you need to check whether the journal is indexed in the box and the scope if not you are wasting your money this is this is the takeaway that i want to leave you here if you publish your open access fine absolutely fine you are free to do and you can pay the money and you can immediately make your content freely available to the audience only thing uh, uh, whether your research is a ground breaking research immediately you want to reach the society yes you need to go for open access but make sure that the journals are the box and the scope because the any nirs or nac or any of the premier bodies uh, assessing the quality of your institution or individual they will look for only the web of science as focus index journal whenever you come across a journal metric like impact factor site score and so on many uh, many uh, indexes are there which are uh, not uh, covered in this chart but given in the website you should be watchful you should check the uh, the uh, reliability of those numbers and you need to make a questions on that and then you can uh, select a journal read the recent articles in the premier journals in your field and design your work to match the expectations of the journal uh, i want to say that uh, some people are saying that i have worked so much and i have 10 papers with me let me uh, publish those papers and please suggest the journal no 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 that is not a good way you need to follow the literature which means you need to know the premier journals in your field don't worry about impact factor and other things it is a premier index journal in your field and you read the articles and you can get to know about what is the current trend what is the expectation that the reviewers readers authors uh, expect from you and match the expectations and submit i'll give one example if you have uh, 100 samples in your data collection and you want to publish that into a particular journal so you read few articles whether that sample size is okay for that journal or not sometimes the journal is expecting 1000 10000 and with your 100 if you submit the paper they will immediately reject your paper because they they tell that your journal is not or your work is not up to the mark 
so you need to be very clear in following the literature fake journals look for money while legitimate open access journals look for quality of research i tell you fake journals are a dubious journal or the predatory journals they aim for money they will never care about the quality of the article there will not be any peer review it will be published within a week within 3 days within 2 days you send me a mail i'll confirm you can follow through whatsapp and then uh, this will no 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 don't do that while legitimate journal that will also demand money as i have uh, given that list but their prime importance is review process and the quality and the content of your work once that is there then only they will come to the money part but on the other hand vice versa is happening in tech journal you need to be very careful about that to publish a quality research work in a standard journal yes it will take time rome was not built in a day okay so i want to publish 10 papers in one week no don't ever never try that because it is very awkward in research arena if you want to have a quality research work to be published in a standard journal yes they will take time you need to have the patience to get a good quality paper you can easily avoid publishing in an unworthy journal by taking few minutes to investigate the Any way to keep the mouth of these predatory journals shut is not submitting our wonderful work to those journals. Don't ever, never pray to these predatory journals. I dedicate this talk to my teachers of St. Xavier's College, Kuala Lumpur, and my teachers of my beloved Bishop Weber College, Vishrapalli, and the third institution. Dr. Solomon, am I audible? Ah, yes, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I have three questions for you. The first one: If if a DOAJ listed journal is not in the list of UGC care, is it okay? Uh, so I I would say that uh, UGC care journals group one may change at any time. Okay. So, but if it's a DOAJ listed, because if you if an open access journal it should be indexed in Web of Science, the first criteria is it should be listed in DOAJ. Okay. So, if a journal is not in DOAJ and still is the open access, and it is up to you to decide the journal you want to publish in that journal or not. But, but somebody should read, somebody should care, somebody should cite your research. You should be very particular about that. So the next. Next question is kindly throw some light on predatory and cloned journals. Okay, so uh, uh, it, it it again depends on. If suppose you say that uh, how many people are reading that journal, how often the journal is cited, that is very very important. So uh, if you have a thorough idea about how to verify the journal in the book and then focus, then you uh, you will not. Uh, uh, you know, uh, look into other aspects of the journal. You say that clone journal is very similar names or similar uh, in aspect, right? Is my understanding right? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay. So in that in that way, so for example, let's say impact factor is two point six, which means each of the article published in the journal is cited by two point six times. Some people are saying my impact factor. I published a paper in impact factor ten. Okay, so how many citations your paper received? Zero, which means nobody reads. 
but simply they claim that their impact factor is 10 or 15. So don't go by the attractiveness of the PDF, attractiveness of the website. Okay, you question every aspect in the website, and you get a clear picture, and then you submit the journal. In that way, you can clearly avoid the clone journal uh, or predatory journal. The last question: Are journals indexed in Google Scholar treated as authentic? Okay. So Google Scholar, if you want to have anything in the internet, Google Scholar will list. So you don't take that as a measure. Google Scholar, whatever you publish, everything will be available in the internet. That will be automatically be a part of Google Scholar. Okay. So you don't go by Google Scholar. I again I tell you, you go to Web of Science and Corpus, and they don't go by Google Scholar index or some other you know un uh, you know uh, unknown sources. They may also index your journal. Don't go to those journals because your journal uh, your paper will not get a lot of citations. Nobody will read because they will question your quality of research. Though you have done an excellent work, and your quality will be questioned. If you publish those papers because you feel that you have a quality work, then why you want to go to those journals? You go and submit your journals in the standard uh, database. So in that way, your uh, your research will be uh, disseminated to the entire crowd, entire globe. Okay. So I would say that don't. You can have a Google Scholar account and you can find the citation and so on. You can use Google Scholar for research, uh, searching the literature. That is fine, but don't take that as a bible of you know uh, the quality of that. No, no, no. Don't do that. Uh, thank you, Dr. Solomon. It was indeed a wonderful presentation, and I could see many of the participants in the YouTube chat box very appreciative of your presentation. Thank you so much for this wonderful. Uh, talk today. I think for many of the beginner uh, research scholars, it would definitely be a big eye opener in terms of publishing their research articles in uh, quality and peer-reviewed journals. On behalf of the management of Loyola College and the organizing team, I profusely thank uh, thank you for accepting our invitation to be here and present this wonderful talk this morning. Thank you all very much for us. Thank you. Sir. Over to Dr. Madhavan. Thank you, Dr. Samson and Dr. Milton. Thank you very much. As we move on to the final session of this webinar, I am happy to introduce the speaker of the session, Dr. Ruban Jonathan. Dr. Ruban is currently Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, Madras Christian College. Uh, Dr. Ruban did his UG, PG, and MPhil from the new college and PhD from Madras University. With two decades of research experience, 30 research publications, and 15 invited lectures, he will be talking to us on plagiarism, and we will be explaining to us about how to abstain from academic artifice. Dr. Ruben is an expressive teacher and an ardent researcher. Happy to have you, Dr. Ruben, for this session. Over to Dr. Ruben.
visible is it visible now hello is it visible yes sir you can proceed sir no okay. issues thank you thank you uh, the topic that was allocated to me was plagiarism and before i could go to uh, the nuances related to it let me thank the organizers for uh, introducing me and uh, i would like to thank god the lord jesus christ for giving me this opportunity to uh, present what i have gained uh, on the title plagiarism abstain from this academic artifice here i would like to bring in uh, the two points one is the, the, the term is called as abstain the second one is artifice the word abstain means is to refrain or to restrain or uh, for that matter very simply to avoid the second thing that i wanted to bring here is called as artifice it can be referred as a deceit dishonesty or for that matter very simply it could be uh, put as unfairness now before i could go deep into the real aspects of plagiarism let me give you some brief information publishing papers in an impact factor scopus index international journals is the norm of today's academic arena hence professors research scholars and even students at the college and the university level strive to write manuscripts to bring in greater academic excellence in this context something called as plagiarism creeps in unnoticed and if it is not checked and uh, it can bring disrepute to authors who get involved in publishing papers so it should be absolutely good to understand its real facets and abstain from it now i received comment questions from uh, the people who have joined for today's program and uh, here i would like to thank dr vijay salaman for helping me to consolidate the different questions that came and it says what is plagiarism and what is not plagiarism and the second one is to uh, how to avoid plagiarism in the introduction section third why percentage of plagiarism is varied from university to university and fourth can you tell me any software that is free of cost to check plagiarism and here my friends i would like to uh, uh, say something about the questions when i try to discuss uh things in detail as we move from uh, the the time that was given to us in this domain let me introduce something called as academic dishonesty academic dishonesty can also be called as academic misconduct or for that matter it can be called as academic fraud or academic deceit now it's very simple it's activities that are involved by students or for that matter research scholars that go against the academic norms of the college or for that matter the university or research institution to which they belong it can involve fabrication fabrication means making up of data then falsification that means manipulation of the data then comes what is called as deception that is providing false information then cheating an attempt to exploit the circumstance then comes a term called as sabotage sabotage is nothing but it's acting to prevent others from completing their work then comes what is called as the conflict of uh, interest here we need to understand it's a clash of personal or private interest with that of professional activities and the last but not the least is what is called as plagiarism that i'm going to discuss today now if you talk about plagiarism this is an egregious approach in paper writing as well as assignment submission that should be understood in a clear cut fashion that is why i used the word conspicuously in this particular uh, statement and it can be understood if at all we go through the five aspects that i've Uh, uh, placed on the uh, slide here concept is involved classification is involved causes the root cause is involved and then consequences and finally we need to understand the control measures that are associated with it now let me start with the concept now uh, ugc the object apex body which takes care of uh, the academic aspect of the whole nation of india at the higher level has come out with a statement i have put it in the slide let me read it for you it is a practice of taking someone else work or idea and passing them as their own and here i must also tell you elsevier one of a, one of a good scientific publishing company and they have defined what is plagiar plagiarism and i would like to bring that before you it is nothing but it is committing uh, or it is involved associated with uh, taking somebody's work uh, without permission credit or acknowledgement and writing it as their own and plagiarism takes different forms from literal copying 
to paraphrasing the work of another person. Now, the other names that are found in literature are represented here. It can be called as academic misconduct, ethical offense, egregious approach, academic deceit, or for that matter, it can also be called as academic fraud. Now, here I would like to tell you, uh, I've heard people pronouncing the word uh, P-L-A-G-I-A-R-I-S-M as some, some have pronounced it this way, plagiarism. The some have pronounced it as plagiarism, but the right way of pronouncing is plagiarism. That is the right way of pronouncing it. And it is a noun form. And somebody who is going to pl plagiarize, uh, he is called as a plagiarist. And uh, that is also a noun form. The verb form is what? Uh, to plagiarize. Now, a question comes. What and all can be plagiarized? I have listed almost uh, 15 plus uh, materials. To start with, you have computer programs, then comes diagrams, then e-materials, findings, graphic representations, graphs, ideas, illustrations, informations, lectures, poems, printed material, tables, words, or language, writings, or for that matter, any other material can be plagiarized. Now, let me move on to uh, the next aspect of it. This is very important. And we, I want you to see this very uh, clearly here. Uh, the table goal, uh, goes like this. I've captioned it this way. Zero tolerance for plagiarism by world's top universities. If you take Stanford University, Stanford University is one of the top three inst institutions available, not just in the United States, but in the whole of our globe. And they are against plagiarism. And they have given a lot of information with respect to plagiarism in this particular link. Then comes what is called as uh, the Oxford University, which is one of the oldest institutions available on our planet Earth. It is available in UK, Europe, and they are also against plagiarism. And they have given a lot of information in this particular link. I want you to go through that. I want you to see through that so that you will know the significance of it. Then comes University of Melbourne in Australia. Uh, then University, uh, National University of Singapore, which represents uh, the best institution in Asia. Then in India, we have the Indian Institute of Science. They also bring in plagiarism under academic integrity. And finally, in Africa, you South Africa, you have the University of Cape Town, which says avoid plagiarism. Now, I would like to bring in plagiarism stories here. And I must also tell you, these are not happy stories. These are stories which are heartbreaking. So I've, I've taken one one story from each continent and I've placed it before you so that you will know that you should avoid plagiarism henceforth, hereafter, for all the days of your life. Let me start with North, North America. Professor of medicine, he was working in an Ivy League university uh, and he was uh, involved in publishing a paper in the year 2016 in a famous uh, uh, medicinal journal. And he was asked by the authorities, university or authorities I'm talking about, to resign for not giving due credit to another professor when the paper was published. So it's a sad story, as I told you. The person had to, uh, a good, good uh, uh, professor in terms of his subject, but bad in terms of plagiarism. So he was asked to uh, put his papers, he was asked to go out of the campus, and it was very unpleasant. Next, I would like to bring in an information from Europe. Uh, a health minister of a European nation resigned in shame after evidence emerged that she plagiarized parts of her PG thesis. PG, I'm talking about PG thesis submitted many years back. What we did in the past can have ramifications in the negative ramifications in the future. We should be very careful about plagiarism. The third one is from South America. It's about a novelist. A famous novelist was sued by her contemporary for plagiarism and the court proved her guilty. All her novels were removed from Amazon shelf. So it's definitely devastating. Then comes what happened. Uh, yeah, I want to tell something which happened in China. A thespian. A thespian is an actor. And he wanted to do postdoctoral research work in a very famous university in Asia. And it's called as Peking University. And he was asked to submit two essays. And he wrote two essays. And the people found plagiarism in it. And because of that, he was denied postdoctoral position. And finally, let me come to Africa. Africa, here, an African filmmaker utilized a section of a short story written by an African writer without his consent 
for film production. This issue was taken to court and the writer received a huge sum of money in the form of compensation. All these things are devastating stories that really uh, break our hearts if at all we come to know about it. I have I've not put in a lot of things in detail because these are all bad informations, but if you want to get uh, real, uh, real, true information, uh, the, that is exact information, precise information, you can go through the links that I've given below. Next, let me move on to the plagiarism statistics. Here, when the survey was conducted, 90% of the researchers felt that they might lose uh, points or, or that for that matter, they will get bad grades because of plagiarism. 84% of the researchers felt they might be suspended or for that matter, they, they will be excluded. They will be taken away from the institute. Then comes 44% of people who felt they might be experiencing legal uh, prosecution provided if they get involved in plagiarism. And 26% of the people felt that they have to pay monetary fine provided if they are caught. And 5% of the people felt that I'm not aware of it. Uh, I'm ignorant of it. I don't know. Then comes the last set of people. Three percentage said nothing will happen. I am in control. Nothing will happen. So this is what people felt with respect to plagiarism. Then comes uh, the cause of plagiarism. The opinion of the people with respect to the cause of plagiarism. And the survey says like this. 75 percentage of the people said because of paraphrasing plagiarism comes. 71 percentage of the people said because of repetitive research plagiarism can come. The third group of people, 69 percentage, they said because of poor representation of secondary resource, uh, plagiarism can become a reality. And the fourth set of people, they are 63 percentage in terms of num uh, uh, 63 percentage of people felt that because of duplication, plagiarism can become a reality. And last but not the least, it's 59 percentage of people who said because of verbatim, plagiarism can become a reality. Now here, and before we could get into the uh, other important facets of plagiarism, we need to know about citation. If we know about citation, then we know something more uh, deep about citation, then we will be able to avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism can be reduced to a greater extent provided if you understand citation in a clear fashion. So I would like to throw a light on that for a very brief span of time. Let me start with the definition of a term called a citation. It goes like this. A reference to be published or unpublished source that one consulted and obtained information from while writing a research paper. And this is the definition of a term called a citation. Now, now comes the advantage advantages of citation. Now, the first advantage is that the person has conducted thorough review of literature. Uh, we are able to understand that the person has done his work in a very systematic manner with respect to a literature survey. The second point is it allows others to locate the materials used for manuscript preparation. The third point is it reinforces the argument put forward by the author in the manuscript. And the final one is it helps in avoiding serious repercussions. Next. Now, a question comes. What should be cited in a research paper? A lot of things are expected to be cited. I've listed it down. Let me read it for you. Quotations opinions and predictions whether directly or directly quoted or paraphrased they should be cited statistics derived by original author should be cited visuals in the original form should be cited another author's theories should be cited case studies when used should be cited another author's direct experimental results or methods should be cited and the last one is another author's specialized research procedures or findings should be cited then ugc the apex body which is associated with collegiate and university research uh, not just the research the academic part of it they have given guidelines for authors with respect to citation policy and uh, they have given three points i've listed it for you let me read it for you when 10 words are taken together from some established core work citation becomes essential that means if you take 10 words from an established core work then you need to bring citation into picture. The second point is when the copy content, content reaches 40 words in accumulation, the fragment needs to be kept under inverted comma, that too in italics. The third one is authors are necessarily required to cite references in case of any content adopted from anywhere other than internet open sites. It is also 
uh, going like this. Even if in the case of open site internet source, the copy contents, if found more than 30% in aggregate during plagiarism detection, the work shall not be considered for further proceedings. Okay. Now, let me move on to uh, the next important thing. This is something called as the common knowledge. Now, there is something called as common knowledge. And a question comes, should common knowledge be cited? Yes, common knowledge need not be cited. So this is something that we should keep in mind because everybody knows it. So it need not be cited. I've given a lot of examples. Alcohol is miscible with water. Steve Jobs is a co-founder of Apple Corporation. Sri Lanka is an island nation. Number four, Alexander the Great was a Greek emperor. Z is the last alphabet in the English language. Now, I want to throw some light on paraphrasing, quotation, and summarizing so that citation will be understood in real sense. To start with, let me start with paraphrasing. Paraphrasing, it's nothing but it's formulating someone else's ideas in one's own word. Now, it is, it is also called as its alternative to quoting. Even then, in spite of doing what is called as uh, paraphrasing in manuscript preparation, here we need to bring in citation into reality. I've given an example. Uh, uh, the original version is there and the paraphrased version is also there. I want you to go through this uh, so that let me move on to the next one. The next one is called as the quote. It is to repeat the exact words written of some researcher in one's own manuscript in inverted commas, a quote should be accompanied by a citation. This is very important. Even if you quote, still you need to bring citation into picture. Here I must tell you, uh, when you uh, talk about quote, here in arts background, quoting is very much a commonality in writing paper, but not in science background. It is less frequent in science publications. Quotes should be appropriate only when giving a precise definition of a term saying something about the author's style or language then the third one is providing evidence in support of an argument and the final one is criticizing or analyzing a specific claim now we have come to the last part of uh, what is called as citation and this is with respect to summarizing outlining the main points of a reading in one's own word without adding new ideas or changing the author's meaning. I'm talking about the original author's meaning. That is what is called as summarizing. And even when we go for summarizing, it should be accompanied by citation. And you see the original source is very big in terms of words, very large in terms of words. But after summarizing, you see it becomes one, it became one third of the original material, but still the idea is thoroughly retained and no new idea crept in. So this should be kept in mind. Then comes the classification. There are a lot of classification systems available. Some say that there are only two types available. Some say four types available. Some say yeah, yeah, six types available. But I brought in eight uh, types. Now, let me start with the first one. This, uh, the first one is called as uh, the complete plagiarism. It can also be called as the global plagiarism because it's a very, very serious uh, thing that should be kept in mind. We should avoid that to a greater extent. Uh, the second one is source-based plagiarism. The third one is direct plagiarism. The fourth one is self-plagiarism, or it can also be called as auto-plagiarism. The fifth one is pa paraphrasing plagiarism. The sixth one is uh, misleading plagiarism. Seventh is mosaic plagiarism. And the final one is accidental plagiarism. Here, let me begin with the first one. As I already told you, it can also be called as global plagiarism. Here, the researcher takes a thesis that someone else created and submits it under his or her name. This is a very bad practice which has been part and parcel of our uh, learning uh, at the collegiate level for a very long time and this should be put off at any at every point of time henceforth and i i will i will give that in detail uh, i've given it in the form of an illustration let me read for you a postgraduate student carries out no research work understand no research work during the stipulated time allocated but visits the library at the last moment uh, takes photocopies of the thesis which belongs to the era where no plagiarism detection was performed types word by word using it and submits it for viva was the examination and i tell you this has been the practice for a lot of students and we should be very careful about this as teaching faculty and students should avoid this the second one is source-based plagiarism 
here the researcher uses a secondary source of data or information but only cites the primary source of information and i've listed a lot of examples i'll read it for you so that it will go into your mind the first one is a novel that is a primary source and the secondary source is the article analyzing the novel the second one is painting uh, the second it's secondary source the respective secondary source is exhibition catalog explaining the painting the third one is letters and diaries uh, written by a historical figure and uh, the secondary source of it is biography of the historical figure the fourth one is government policy that uh, that was given that was provided to common man newspaper article about the new policy will turn out of its secondary source then you have music recordings as the primary source and the secondary source is something but called as a blog post interpreting the results of the poll uh, academic academic uh, book about the musical style uh, that is nothing but uh, the secondary source of the music recording and for what is called uh, the results of an opinion poll blog post interpreting the results of an opinion poll turns out to be the secondary source and finally empirical study is a primary source literature review that cites the study is a secondary source then comes the third one the third one is called as direct plagiarism it can also be called as uh, verbatim plagiarism um, researchers copying the text of another author word for word without citing uh, then this plagiarism becomes a reality see the original see the original source see the see the words that i have brought out in green that is from the original source and the plagiarizer has brought the same set of words in the new paper and i tell you this turned out to be a uh, direct plagiarism and this should be avoided at any cost by giving citation and yeah, with with para paraphrasing then comes the self or auto plagiarism this can also be called as duplication or recycle plagiarism here the the, the original reuse a significant portion or his or her, uh, uh, her work previously published without attribution now if you take uh, the original work and the new work uh, the new work comes out with little change in the words but the original idea is totally represented in the new work without citation is uh, there and because of that the author involves in self plagiarism and that should be avoided as well then comes paraphrasing plagiarism paraphrasing pl pl plagiarism is something where the researchers uses one uh, someone else uh, writing with some minor changes in the sentences and using it as his or her own material uh, you you see you i have given an example i don't want to read all these things for want of time uh, you can go through this at a later stage then comes uh, the misleading plagiarism and i must tell you it can also be called as inappropriate authorship it can happen in two ways this is very much prevalent in our context i would like to read it for you so that you will understand you will or for that, for that matter you would have experienced this in the past you will be able to recall what i am trying to say what really happened in your life at some point of time or for that matter it might happen in the future that you should be careful about the first one uh, goes like this when an individual contributes to a manuscript but does not get credit for it and this is very very dangerous somebody is working for the paper but that paper uh, that uh, person is not included as an author but rather that person is brought in the, into picture in the paper uh, as the acknowledgement uh, domain so uh, it should be avoided and here juniors get uh, affected because of that because they are made to get involved in, they are they are made to work uh, go into what is called as the table work uh, but they don't get credit for it and it's bad it should be avoided at any cost the second form, form, form is opposite to that of the first form and here an individual who is so superior gets credit without contributing to the work here we talk about the seniors in our system they try to exploit the juniors by just uh, putting pressure saying that uh, you need to put my name uh, if not i will not allow you to publish this paper or i will co come as a stumbling block to you and because of this the junior uh, researcher Uh, brings in the senior into picture as a result the paper is published but this is ill this form should be avoided at any point of time let me go to the seventh one the seventh one is what is called as the mosaic plagiarism uh, it can also be called as the patchwork plagiarism here it interlaces someone else uh, uh, phrases or text within the research or researcher's own uh, research work and here this is not uh, something uh, whole text is brought into picture here a small information which was available in the previous text was was brought into the the, the writer's uh, manuscript 
and i tell you the portion is represented uh, in what is called as the original work uh, it is represented in green color the same material was brought into what is called as the, the writer of the new paper where uh, it, it was represented in red finally i must talk about accidental plagiarism it can occur because of uh, neglect or mistake or for that matter unintentional paraphrasing it can also even be due to disregard for proper scholarly procedures i, I was able to list out unintentional plagiarism that i uh, that i obtained from a uh, uh, us university from carolina and uh, I, I i wanted to read for you it's failure to cite a source that is not common knowledge failure to quote or block quote authors exact words even if cited failure to paraphrase in one's own words even if cited failure to summarize in one's own words even if cited failure to be loyal to a source all these reasons can come into picture and this will lead to accidental plagiarism now let me go to the causes uh, the root cause of plagiarism and we need to understand why plagiarism really comes into picture and we need to uh, understand how it comes and it's going to be really meaningful to us if at all we understand the reasons then we will be able to eliminate this from paper writing let me start with the first one the first one is so simple it's called as lack of awareness about plagiarism once upon a time ignorance was considered as bliss but today ignorance is no more bliss it's a burden so we need to be aware of plagiarism the second one is inadequate knowledge of principles of citation now i must tell you as i told you uh, in the past about citation citation is mandatory if at all we don't understand all the facets of citation with all inclination towards it we will not be able to uh, go uh, put away plagiarism to a greater extent the third one is procrastination we take time to do things we do things at the last moment and because of that uh, plagiarism can come into picture even if, if at all we come across poor time uh, time management in our lifestyle then it can bring in plagiarism the fourth reason is there is a greater disinterest in manuscript uh, manuscript preparation i have seen lot of researchers they work all the day all the night in the laboratory come out with all the data but once when you ask them to write papers they scratch their head this is the very much possible in the research arena where students research scholars experience this and this should be avoided then the then the next point is believe that they will not get caught this is uh, something which is available with our people let come what may nothing will happen nobody will catch us a uh, lot of things are there uh, people will not be able to do anything so let me carry on with this that could be one of the reason for it then comes confusion over what constitutes plagiarism if people are not aware of the every aspect of plagiarism the every facet of it in a clear in a, a, a experiential knowledge if they don't have then it can lead to what is called as plagiarism or for that matter even current university policies if people are not aware of it then it can lead to plagiarism and then uh, let me go uh, let me come to the penultimate cause the penultimate cause goes like this it's the desire to get good grade and getting marks is what is more important uh, that, that is going to be the attitude of the person and then that can lead to plagiarism at some point of time and last but not the least it's called as fear of failing so we should not have all these things in our lifestyle so that we will not give room for plagiarism then ugc has come out with certain norms on plagiarism and ugc's norm is represented uh, in this particular slide it was brought into reality in the year 2017 and it is called as promotion of academic integrity and pre prevention of plagiarism in higher educational institutions and i tell you if somebody is going to be caught uh red handed in plagiarism while uh, publishing a paper and if it is uh, brought to the notice of uh, the ugc the ugc will constitute a committee and uh, two people will come from outside and they will deliberate uh, the issue and they will try to understand the reality now uh, level 1 level 2 and level 3 uh, breaches are there similarities about uh, about 10 percentage and below 40 percentage comes under level 1 here the the research scholar is only punished and and what is the punishment let me read it for you 
to withdraw the manuscript submitted for publication and the person is not permitted to publish any work for at least one year or one year of time and level two uh, it is between uh, the percentage of plagiarism is between 40 percentage to 60 percentage and here the research scholar is made to withdraw uh, the manuscript and for two years of time he or she is not permitted to publish a paper now in this case in level two even the research supervisor is also affected uh, here uh, the research supervisor is losing one annual increment and uh, the person is not permitted to be a supervisor for any ug pg um, mphil phd research scholars uh, program for a period of two years of time then the third one goes like this if plagiarism is beyond 60 percentage then the research scholar will be asked to withdraw his manuscript and for a span of three years of time he or she will not be permitted to uh, publish any research work and the, uh, the, if you consider the research scholars uh, penalty the punishment uh, that is involved here for two successive years uh, the, the person will use uh, lose annual increment and the person will not be allowed to be a supervisor to any UG, PG, Masters, MPhil, PhD scholars for a period of three years of time. It is definitely a disgrace to a research supervisor. So people should take this very seriously and should work on paper writing in a very, very uh, learned manner so that we can avoid plagiarism to a greater extent. Now, let us assume if somebody is going to have plagiarism in a paper between zero, 1 to 10 percentage, then uh, the authors can take back the paper uh go for revision of it uh, re reworking it and again submitting it that is possible in this case then let me move on to the consequences if you consider the consequences the consequences is awesome it's very heartbreaking and i would like to come out with each and everyone in a systematic manner let me start with the first one it destroys individuals or research groups credibility and perceived integrity amidst contemporaries so the name is gone you cannot stand other people it's it's going to be hurting in the days to come so we should be very careful to avoid plagiarism at all costs second it can bring the college the university the research center and even the nation into disrepute so we should not bring our nation the motherland the, the democratic nation to which we belong to we should honor it we should honor the institution to which we belong to so we should avoid plagiarism at all costs the third one is abrupt cancellation of research funds by the appropriate funding agencies today to a greater extent a lot of funding organizations are available they are funding a lot of research projects and if one paper comes out with plagiarism then immediately funds will be stopped and the research scholar will get affected the research supervisor will get affected the department will get affected the college will get affected and we should be careful about it next comes much higher uh, issue suspension from college university or research centers can be possible it, uh, in western countries it is viewed very severe severely so they they can even suspend a particular student or for that matter research scholar because of or for that matter even a teaching faculty can be suspended provided uh, they found they are found guilty then comes much greater thing called as termination even a student a research scholar or for that matter a scientist can be terminated or for that matter even a teaching faculty can be terminated provided uh, if it comes before uh, the governing body of the institution to which they belong to and it can uh, be a huge disrepute it can be something which will uh, put shame which will bring uh, dis, uh, uh, disrepute to anybody for that matter then even legal repercussions can be possible it can lead to imprisonment or it can also uh, incur huge fine so uh, these two things are very much a possibility uh, in some nations this is also a possibility so we should be very careful about it and for that matter the last one is much more severe it can be it goes like this the person can be sent back to one's own country for example pdfs from india for indians go as for postdoctoral positions to europe and to other developed nations where they make good money out of it and uh, to get a uh, uh, greater number of papers they go uh, they go abroad uh, in, uh, before they could get a permanent option in india they go abroad to uh, get uh, all the nuances related to research in the field in a systematic manner if they bring in what is called as plagiarism then 
they can be deported back to their own country this this was made possible in europe and some of some of some of our uh, uh, acquaintance they have gone to europe and they got involved in plagiarism and immediately the person was sent back to india and it is something that we should really take it to our heart and we should keep ourselves away from it and and here i would like to bring in plagiarism detection tools now uh, you can pay money to uh, buy plagiarism softwares and the open source softwares are also available and here i have listed down four uh, plagiarism detector tools that are available before us but these things are very costly and uh, i will tell you turnitin is very famous throughout the world top universities of the world they have it in india if you take about iits and iics they use uh, turnitin software uh, for uh, plagiarism detection then urkun software is available uh, in india where some university state universities they use urkun software even in our college madras uh, our college is madras christian college where urkun software is available uh, for our post graduate students and an enfl students we make use of urkun software for anti uh, anti plagiarism as anti plagiarism tool then comes the third one the third one is called as the, the authenticate this is also something which we pay money to buy and this is being used by the publishing units i'm talking about the publishing units you have a lot of publishing units available who get involved in publishing review articles uh, 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 journals uh, textbooks and uh, they get mono, uh, monographs they get involved in uh, what is called as uh, plagiarism detection uh, process by making use of this particular facility for individuals unicheck is available it's not very costly we can buy it and we can use it uh, then let me want to the open source softwares that are available and uh, i have listed many many more 20 more than 20 softwares are available i have listed down 14 before you uh, let me let me read it for you it's called as dupy checker edubody qtext uh, copyscape white smoke plagiarisma pro writing aid paper writer copy leaks plagiarism checker plagium plag scan plag tacker and finally wiper all these things are uh, readily available and i would encourage uh, phd scholars and those people who get involved in paper writing please don't use these softwares you please uh, use the softwares that i have put in the previous slide and these softwares can be used for uh ug students and pg students who get involved in writing assignments the, you can use this for plagiarism check and you can submit it to your concerned teacher and uh, this is free of cost uh, so some uh, some are asked to pay money but the trial version is free and here i must also tell something about uh, the drill bit uh, there is yet another software called as drill bit this was an indigenous software brought forth in india and uh, it is available in the market and the people are interested can they can buy and they can use it then let me come to the last aspect of uh, plagiarism its control measures what should be done to put away plagiarism what should be done to refrain from plagiarism what should be done to restrain ourselves from plagiarism what should be done to avoid plagiarism i, I was able to list out certain points i would like to bring it before you the first thing is to bring awareness about plagiarism even at the school level because only when you train a child then the child when the child grows the child will refrain from evil things in tamil we call it tottil palakam sudukadu mattum and if you train the child when the child is very young then i tell you before the child could come to teens if the child learns how to call, uh, write and how to learn things related to plagiarism then i tell you assignment submission will not have any problem it will have originality because of good learning and good learning brings originality originality will lead to avoiding plagiarism the second point is to lead students into the knowledge of all the facets of citation yes if you want to keep yourself from plagiarism you need to know every aspect of citation in a clear fashion if not without our knowledge plagiarism will creep in into our manuscript the third point is to impart academic ethics and integrity among students and research scholars this is very much an essential component we we don't want good knowledgeable people we want knowledgeable people with good uh, ethics and integrity only with good ethics and integrity a good nation can become a reality then let me go to the fourth point 
uh, we need to train students to handle plagiarism detect, uh, detection tools. As I told you, pl plenty of tools are available. We can uh, make use of the facility from internet and we can learn the trick of the trade. Over a span of time, we'll, we'll master it. And last but not the least, the last is to entertain original creative writing with appropriate citation. So if at all we follow all these uh, pra uh, things, then I tell you, we will definitely put a check on uh, plagiarism so that our papers will have greater validity. And finally, let me thank everybody who sat and listened to me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ruben Jonathan. Thank you, sir. It was a wonderful presentation indeed. There were many questions on the plagiarism in the beginning of your lecture. Oh, sure. But in, uh, through as you started presenting your presentation, you answered uh, many of those questions. Oh, thank and particularly, you. there were questions related to self-plagiarism and uh, paid and open source free plagiarism software available for ready use. All these things you have listed beautifully. Okay, and it was indeed a wonderful presentation on your part on how to avoid okay. plagiarism in publishing research articles by the research students and research scholars. And we are the management and the team of organizers. I would like to thank you profusely for this wonderful presentation this morning. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. It's an honor yeah. to be here, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Kindly, kindly click the stop presenting. Uh, I, I already clicked the stop presenting. Okay, sir. Thank you. Is my slide visible? Yeah, sir, the slide is visible, sir. No, sir, you go to show. I think it is visible now. Dear participants, uh, thank you very much for showing interest in attending our webinar for two days. The feedback and quiz link is going to be enabled in another 5 to 10 minutes time. The link is given here. You can take a screenshot of it. It will be available only for one hour. Attendees of the feedback and quiz alone will receive certificates. It would be impossible to entertain the claims of others. Please take note of it. Now, dear participants, if you find this two days webinar useful, will you type just a yes in the YouTube chat box, please? On view of the management of Loyola College, I would like to thank all the participants for showing interest in taking part in this webinar for two days. And I would like to thank, in a special way, all the organizers of the event, the resource persons, particularly Professor Wilson, Secretary and Principal of Madras Christian College, Chennai, Dr. Solomon from the Department of Chemistry, Madras Christian College, Chennai, Dr. Jonathan, from the Department of Chemistry, Madras Christian College, Chennai, and Dr. Jacob Madhavan, Department of Chemistry, Loyola College, Chennai, for contributing immensely towards the success of this two days webinar. In a big way, 
again i would like to thank all of you in a special way for taking part in this two days webinar on research methodology thank you one and all dear friends have a nice day
Welcome to the postgraduate program in artificial